How to make a Stuart 5A crosshead lubricator. Part 3. The pump inlet pipe and oil filler components. Since the last episode I've completed the tank, I silver soldered the other end onto it. I didn't see the need to video this part, because you've already seen me do the other side and the process is identical. But now I have a tank, with both of the ends silver soldered in place. This is what I'm going to use to pump the oil up to the crosshead. It's a miniature steam locomotive tender hand pump and it's in the drilling machine at the moment because I need to enlarge the inlet underneath the 5 seconds of an inch. This clip shows me making a mark on a piece of 5 seconds of an inch pipe and here I cut it on the bandsaw and this piece of pipe is going to be soldered into the bottom of the hand pump. But before I do that I'm making sure it's the right length. Over now to the outside part of the workshop and I'm using a very small nozzle on my blowtorch. This is because I need to soft solder this piece of copper pipe into the bottom of the pump's inlet. So I don't need much heat really, just sufficient to melt the solder. And whenever I soft solder, I finish the job off with a paintbrush dipped in water to clean away the flux residue. The paint on these hand pumps chips as soon as you look at it. So in this clip I'm repainting the part that got damaged by the heat. And once the paint's dried it will be a very good match. The mark on the brass tank at the top is not paint by the way, it's just a mark on the brass tank at the top. I'll clean this off in due course. What I need to do now is make the oil filler cap, so I need to know the diameter of the hole so I can machine a part to fit in it. This is a small piece of brass hexagon fitted into the chuck and I'm machining the outer part of it to be a snug fit in the hole in the tank. After turning the end of it to the correct size, I drill a hole down the middle, starting with a centre drill and then following through with a half inch diameter twist drill. The lathe is going a little bit too fast for this part of the job, but as my back is particularly painful today, I don't fancy bending down and changing the pulley in the cabinet, so I'll just live with this. Most of the time my back is okay, but from years of moving heavy Hammond organs and sound equipment about, now I'm paying the price. I don't take any painkillers for this because I really have a theory that when you get pain it's your body saying stop doing what you're doing and then it will stop hurting. But sometimes it is essential to take painkillers but in my case no because I'm a bit strange. And in the space of that sentence I've parted off the component, turned it round in the chuck and I'm removing any sharp edges. So that's one part of the filler cap made, now it's time to make the cap that goes into the filler cap assembly. And to make the filler cap I'm using a piece of phosphor bronze and the difference in colour between phosphor bronze and brass should look okay. I like the contrast. This is a very simple plain turning job, nothing special. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank some of the viewers who messaged me saying we're sorry to hear about your divorce and I hope it goes okay. Yes it will go okay because it was either that or the acid bath. Plus I've been divorced before, I've been married twice so I'm sort of getting used to it. In this clip I'm using a knurling tool and this specialist tool creates a pattern on the surface of the metal so you can grip it. I can't do anything at the moment other than wait for the knurling to complete. I'd just like to say I just don't understand women. A few years ago I bought my wife an iPod and she really liked it. And then later on I bought her an iPad and she was a bit confused as to what to do with that. So shortly after that on her birthday I bought her an iRon and she didn't like that, in fact she threw it at me. Women are very strange. I remember many years ago when my grandparents were very old. My grandmother lost her sight unfortunately very late in life and I remember that one Christmas my grandfather bought her a cheese grater and she said it was the most violent book she'd ever read. Anyway, on with the job, this is called Friar Lux Paint. I know it looks on the bottle like it says Friar Lux Pain, it's just the tea's faded away. This Friar Lux Paint is a mixture of solder and flux. It contains lead and tin, so you need to wash your hands after using it. And now I'm fitting the cap, which needs tapping into place with a soft hammer. All I have to do now is heat up the assembly to melt the solder, and then the cap is permanently fixed to the tank. I need to get the part hot enough to melt the solder, but not glowing red like you would do with silver soldering. Before it cools, just to finish off the job, I'm using a paintbrush dipped in water to clean away the flux residue. And while that's cooling, I thought it was a good idea to fit an O-ring to the cap. This will hold it in place and make sure it doesn't fall out. 
I looked in my small box of half inch diameter o-rings and I found one. The gap's a bit too big but it will make it easier to remove the cap once it's in the filler hole. And if you believe that you believe anything, the real reason is I didn't have a parting tool of the correct width for this o-ring. All I need to do now is suspend this part in the acid bath for a while to clean out all the products of the silver soldering inside. So it's into the outer part of the workshop, it's a beautiful day and the sun is shining on the bones in my acid bath and I'm going to leave it in here for about 24 hours. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.